We all know what a human skull looks like, but what is this? Most people always think that it's jelly, but this is actually a human skull covered in lucite. But they're professionally known as X-ray phantom skulls. John's bones. So you might have never heard of these because they're actually extremely rare and hard to find. Phantom skulls were a very specific part of medical history, and they were primarily used by X-ray technologists. These were individuals that would take the phantom skull and place them within an X-ray machine. After that, they would use the X-ray machine on the phantom to make sure that it was fully calibrated. So the lucite would actually replicate a human skull, and these were primarily used in imaging technology. For all of medical history, human bones have always been an essential part of medical education. So this has taken many forms over the last hundred years. And this is one of the most interesting examples of how human remains have been used for medical education and medical training. Most people are familiar with medical skulls as well as exploded skulls, but not many people know about phantoms. In the secondhand market working with these educational pieces, I only know of 16 that exist in the US and here we actually have six of them. Here we have five, but we'll show you the last one in a bit. So how are these actually made? Oftentimes they would take the skull and put it upside down, and you can actually see the pore spout that they would use to put in the material. Now one thing about resin is if there's too much material poured too fast, because of the endothermic reaction, the material can actually catch the mold on fire. Nowadays, casting technology has improved, but in the 60s, it wasn't like that. So if you look at the pore lines, you can actually see the individual layers of how they casted this skull. Taking such a large material, such as a human skull, and then putting it in resin is extremely expensive and hard to do in the mold making process. So this is also a big contributing factor to why they're so rare. We've talked about this in previous videos, but because of anatomical variation, human skulls come in different shapes and sizes. And as a response, the molds that needed to be used to make the phantom skulls all vary in size. So if you see behind me, all the skulls have a different shape because each phantom was made to fit each individual skull. This is why I love acquiring new phantoms for the showroom, just because you can really see how different each one is from one another. Now here's an interesting fact. Phantom skulls used to actually be crystal clear because they were made out of lucite, but because of UV exposure, it actually causes the resin to yellow over time. This phantom skull was actually left in a dimly lit area, and as a response, it's almost crystal clear. I've actually never seen a clear vintage phantom before other than this one. Now, if you look at this phantom, it was actually left in a high sun exposed area, and you could just see how much the lucite has yellowed over time. So this is what happens to resin over the course of 40 to 50 years. Because of how these were used, multiple phantoms were made using different limbs, but also there are different styles that could be seen. Sometimes the neck vertebrae of the cervical region of the spine is also included within phantoms, but these are harder to find. And also phantom hands exist. This is actually a synthetic phantom, meaning that the bone they used wasn't real, but we have also seen examples of real hands being used, and this was also used for calibration. The company that made this is actually Pfizer. And my favorite phantom in the collection, ugh, the phantom leg. So this phantom leg here actually weighs over 60 pounds. Older phantoms actually use real bone, but more modern phantoms use synthetic. So this is actually a synthetic phantom leg using fake plastic bone, but there are actual phantom legs that use real bone too. So it just depends on if it's an antique phantom or it's a modern phantom. But no, there's just so much material here and I couldn't imagine how hard this was to make. But if you look closely, you can actually see the pinholes in which they used to hold the leg in place while they did the pour. But anyone that's watching that's a resin artist can tell you how hard this must have been to do. So some notable phantoms that we actually don't have in the showroom include a phantom torso. This is an entire human torso that's been casted in resin. There are also individual phantom feet that I've seen that exist. And finally, there are also entire human phantoms. It's a human sized phantom that exists. And oh my God, if somebody buys this for me, I would love you to death, but the phantom spine. 
yes, there are phantom spines that also exist. So out of all of those kinds of phantoms, the most popular ones are actually phantom skulls. Now, there are many types of manufacturers that used to make phantoms, but the most popular one out of all was actually 3M. Now, if you look right here, you can actually see the company's logo in the phantom skull. And this is how we were able to track the manufacturer. This skull here also has another 3M logo, and I wanted to show it here. Now, out of all my years of working with medical pieces, I have never seen this before. This piece was actually sold to us by a previous x-ray technologist. Here we have an original Phantom Skull case, and this is actually one of the only ones I've ever seen. This case actually comes with all of the necessary pieces that an x-ray tech would need in order to fully calibrate the machine. The majority of these pieces were used in hospitals, and after they were decommissioned, they were just destroyed. So to find existing pieces are extremely rare. Now I know what you guys are all wondering. What happens if you accidentally drop a Phantom Skull? Well, here's your answer. This phantom skull was actually dropped by the previous owner. Ironically, none of the other phantoms that we've acquired in the showroom had cases, and the only one that did have a case was actually broken. But as you can see here, the resin chemically adhered to the skull, but it actually caused to shatter and break on the top. This is really such a shame. We really try to preserve as much of medical history as possible. And just because this one got a little roughed up doesn't mean people still can't learn and appreciate it. So we were happy to bring it here at the John's Bones collection. And there you have it guys. This is what a phantom skull is. I hope you found this video informative, and if you did, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos. Now, primarily my specialty is in medical history relating to bones, but if there are any x-ray technologists that are watching this video that wanna chime in on how these pieces were used, what period they were from, or just any information at all that can help people learn, I would love to read about it in the comments. And if you wanna see these pieces in person, we will be opening up our showroom to tours in our Brooklyn location soon. So make sure to check out the website for more information on that.